Hello and welcome to another Del Boy 8-bit gaming history. Um, so I've been sort of like demonstrating mostly Commodore 64 games and um, the reason for that is I, I held that machine uh, for longer than any other machine. Um, but you will see in this series um, other machines being played and they will equally be as influential as the games that you're seeing in the uh, the Commodore 64. Now, you'll also see games that are incredibly good, terribly bad, and what I consider to be classic. Um, this game is considered to be under the banner classic for me. Um, and we are not moving forward in time either from the last game that we did. We're moving back, and this time we're going to 1983. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this particular game, which I'm about to show you as an image here. And yes, indeed, it is Beachhead. Beachhead is a very early game, but it's a classic for a particular reason. And again, has quite a nice history to it. So Beachhead is the first US gold game um, that was released in the UK. Um, this particular game was released in America first in 1983 under Access Software. And Access Software was created by Bruce Carver and Chris Jones. Now, they decided um, to design games um, from Utah, Salt Lake City. And uh, basically, Beachhead was the first game that they that they produced. Um, it was done under Bruce Carver and Kevin Homer. Um, and later on, Bruce would write with his brother, Roger. Um, it was the highest selling game by Axis Software for 1987. And it won an award in its first year for usage of sound in a microcomputer. Um, but in the UK, we didn't get it until 1984, um, but it was very early. So um, when it comes to reviews, um, they were before my favorite magazine, Zap64. Okay, hope that, oh, that little bit of history was quite for you quite good for you so what is beachhead well it's a multi-screen game how do i explain multi-screen games in the modern era i suppose the best way is is that in the modern era for, for, for all the youngsters out there they play these party games where it's a series of different little games that make up the whole um beachhead is pretty much that there are six screens but only five of them really have any action in them there is a map screen which is the very first screen that you see then there is a if you wish to use it uh secret passage stage where you guide your ships for a secret passage which is full of um floating mines um, if you can get lots of ships through there, you then have to engage the enemy in a naval attack. And this has got two independently screens, uh, one firing at the planes that fly towards you. And secondly, after the planes are all exhausted, you have to destroy the ships out of the water. Once that is actually destroyed, you then move to the landing mission, which is a tank a scrolling mission where you have to move through the enemy lines all the way up to the end uh, where the dictator is buried in a big heavy gunner um, construction called Kun Lin. Once you destroy that particular uh, construction, the game ends and the you can basically go through the whole process again. Um, to me, it's an absolutely incredible game. But just before I move forward, we'll just show you some screens. So these are the sort of screens that you're likely to find 
in the Commodore 64 version. It's got a nice little title screen, a bit basic. You can see one of the most influential screens, which is the naval attack in the middle there, um, which basically you control a gun and a turret, which basically fires up and down at different elevations. Uh, the final screen is listed there, but you won't see the actual uh, end screen in that particular shot. And then we'll just show you that there were, this was converted later on to other 8-bit machines. Remembering this was a game designed by US Gold, US Gold really only uh, produced games in America under access software for a particular set of machines, and those would have been the Atari, the Commodore 64, and the Apple, and sometimes the I. The, the, the DOS PC machines. This particular one was developed in America and launched under Access Software for Atari, Commodore 64, and Apple. Okay, so I'm not sure which one was developed first, but I've got a f funny feeling that the Atari, being the bigger named brand at the time, would have been the development machine. And you can see that on the left hand side looking very, very nice. Um, the 64 would have then come along a little bit later on and the Apple probably launched at the same time. What can I say about these different versions? Well, the Atari one, I think, has the better use of colour, but it's not all um, cut and thrust that way because sound plays an important part of this game. Anybody who's been in war knows that there's lots of explosions and whizzes, noises and gunfire. Um, and this is where the 64 shines over the Atari Big Brother. Um, then you've got the ZX Spectrum version. Now, this came along a little bit later on. Um, it's not that bad a game. It has its shortfalls, especially on the sound for the, for the, for the Spectrum. But secondly, it doesn't, it doesn't really hold up very well in regards to scrolling. It's not bad, but... When you look at the graphics, they look sort of like they were hand-drawn and dotted about rather than um, the embankments that you find in the Commodore 64 and the Atari version. Then you've got the Amstrad version, which again came out later than the ZX Spectrum version. Now, this version intrigues me because it definitely has the better colour. In certain levels, it definitely has the better graphics and movement. Um, the naval attack actually looks quite good there, and, and it's actually very fun. Uh, but there are version screens later on which definitely are subpar compared to the 64 and the Atari versions. And then we've got um, the last couple of versions uh, for me to demonstrate here. There's the Apple version, which really looks like early PC stuff, CGA, VGA graphics, a very perp, sort of pinky purpley-ish type of um, tint to it. Um, not too bad. Sound is not great. It moves across okay. It's quite fast. Um, and then the last two um, that I want to discuss really is the BBC Electron and Commodore 16. The BBC slash Electron version, it actually holds up not too badly at all. It does have some moments on certain screens where I believe it's just too fast. Uh, they've A game has to have a sort of like movement, a sort of feel to it. Um, and really, some of the sections where you think you need to go quite slowly are sped up so fast that it's not unplayable, but definitely takes you time to get your head around it. And then finally, you've got the Commodore 16 and Plus 4 version, which actually is quite impressive when you consider that Commodore um, launched these machines um, after the Commodore 64, but were not originally intended to be gaming machines. Um, the Commodore 16, you could say, is more a gaming machine. The Plus 4 was aimed at business. From that point of view, it doesn't have that hardware that the Commodore 64 has uh, in regards to um, what a game should feel, play, and look like. 
So now we come to the last section, which is reviews. And Beachhead, being a very, very early game, um, wowed a lot of magazines. Um, there is a review a little bit later on uh, where a retrospective was done of these games about a year or so after they were released. But at the time of the release, this definitely got a 5 out of 5 stars, 9 out of 10, 9.5, 8.5. I've rounded up four magazine reviews that I read before this particular gaming year and came up with a score of about 8 out of 10. Now, my favourite magazine, Zap64, didn't review it in its early issues because the game had been out nearly a year. Um, but a little bit later on, they did do a retrospective of it. They did say that it was a, definitely a classic game, um, but it had dated. And you will see that the game is a dated game. It, it really is quite rough when you look at it now. Um, but they still gave it an impressive 70%. Um, and so with that, I think it's time that we basically played the game. Um, so I'm just going to load it in. Hopefully it won't take too long. And you're going to see some sort of like gameplay from me now. Um, probably very bad because I haven't played this game in quite some, quite some time. So I'm just going to make sure that my settings are all there. This won't take too long. Go. And let's play the game. So like I say, you start off with a very basic map type screen. And I have a choice here of going straight for the enemy that you'll see with those little white dots um, just past that cove. Um, but if you do that, you'll come across an enemy that's got far more ships and planes um, and therefore can be harder. But there is this secret passage which I'm heading for now, which I'm going to try and steer my ships through, which might give me an advantage later on. So then we move to the secret passage. Now, the secret passage really only has forward to speed up and then left and right to turn your grip at angles. You need to avoid these little dots and get to the other side as fast as you can. And do that for all of your ships, which you can see at the bottom there. Just keep doing that. much as you can now i always found this green to be a little bit boring Ooh. <laughs> and, and not exciting unless it, it did make you swear a lot if things like that happened <laughs> but basically all you're doing really is just steering a ship from one side of the screen to the other and it's not really that exciting graphics here are quite nice um, I would say a bit garish in colour. Um, the Atari 8 bit isn't much better. Um, I would say, though, that the Atari overall, when you look at all of the, uh, the game from start to finish, has a better colour scheme. So we're doing okay at the moment. Now, this is where I'm talking about the feel of a game. There are versions that are done on the other 8 bits, which basically, this this boat here, um, which is supposed to be a super battleship, moves like a speedboat. I mean, it, you, you could almost feel like you were sitting on a, like a, like a, some sort of like a um, little mini quad bike on water. <laughs> And uh, really, that's not what a, a tank, a, a battle tank would be like, battleship would be like. So, very interesting how programmers look at some of these things and, um, and decide what the mechanic should be. 
uh, we're nearing the end. Got a couple more ships to try to get through. And then we move to some much more exciting parts to the game. say not really taxing this it really really does aid you later on oh dear do too great there so i think i got quite a few ships through the secret passage and now i need to engage the enemy as close as i can to that cove there we go and now we're going to have some aerial fighting using a gun on my um, battleship to fire at the planes that were going to be coming at me. Now this uses a gun turret that only goes up and down, left and right. And of course, the more you fire your ammunition, um, the, uh, the, the 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 less fire, the less the fire rate will go. You need to be careful of that and not just keep the fire button down. I can only take so much damage. I believe it's 20 on this level. And if the ships get through, then they can cause damage of one or two. So at the moment, I've been hit once with two shots. And once with uh, with um, one shot, so I've just got hit again there, where you saw the plane fly over, and it made a lovely sort of like buzz noise as it flies over. This is where the 64 one shines over the Atari though. And as you can see, there's far less planes when you actually go through the secret passage. Now I need to destroy these ships and I used to use a degree elevation I'm 500 short so what I'm trying to do here is get the elevation right there we are got that one now usually they'll fire about five before they hit you and you're looking really at the elevation so as you can see there I'm 2300 short each degree is 100 meters so basically, you can work it out quite quite fast. So 1,200. Try that. Got hit. I got that one. Quite good. So let's try this one. See how far away I am. 1,000 long, so... one just need to move the joystick about four forward and I've got that let's do this small one shall we cool really I've got to go down 100 long that's one degree oh One hundred short. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, how many times? Got it. That was really annoying. I won't do that again. Right, how far away are we from this boy? Oh, okay, quite high. As you can see, the further away it takes, the longer for the shots to go across. Short. That might be a bit too far. 700 short. Oh. 
Oh, long. That was stupid of me. I, was bound, I thought it was going to say short and went the other way. Yes, got it. So now we're approaching sort of like three quarters. And we're heading towards the beach and the tank section. Now I've brought four, so that means that I get two tanks for every ship. So that's eight, ta ma eight tanks, but that is the maximum that you could bring across anyway. And now I sort of like have a scrolling sort of like maze that I need to progress through to get to the big behemoth that is the construct the, the gunner construction which is that needs to be hit multiple times we're going ahead of ourselves a little bit there now you don't need to destroy everything here but it is best to keep firing because some um, certain certain enemies will come on and move but they're usually pretty stationary they do move you need to move them into your line of fire Bam. so I didn't see that come onto the screen quite there I didn't move it fast enough I have to be very careful because I'm going to need probably three or four tanks to destroy the last the last gunner encampment but that was just the first tank so count that as a test I've never been particularly good at this section but it is quite enjoyable I find the graphics here the tank particularly not too bad it's it is basic frames for its for its movement you know down up straight got it there is also a not a bug but it's something that I think the coder missed and that is the score can stay on the screen for quite some time and you can keep shooting the score and get a massive amount of scores and this is the last part and you'll see there's little windows that I have to shoot at just like at the beginning oh, and I'm gonna need quite a few attempts at this so I did it three times you'll probably see that there was something like eight windows so I'm going to need as many tanks as I possibly can to destroy that encampment you can see I've got quite a few tanks but I make mistakes in this section more than any other area of this game so it's not a conclusion that I'm going to be able to do this and I've played it for many years but hey no excuses let's put our concentration face on and see if we can do this So if you're a high score geek, you'd be thinking, right, I've got to shoot that. But... Later on, when I used to play this game and play it for fun, um, I used to go for the high score as much as possible. So I'd be going for everything. But it's nice that you have the choice. I reckon we might be able to do it with the next tank. What do you think, fellas? Guys and gals? Here we go. Oh, 
I can demonstrate that bug I will. But it's not always easy to activate. Oh, I ain't gonna do it like that. Halfway through my tanks. <sighs> thought I won't risk reaching the score at that point because we lost oh, oh for God's sake right now I'm starting to sweat a bit <laughs> I might go up the top if I'm getting get too bogged down with this But even with this level, the scrolling is not that great. So Commodore 64 is well known for its hardware scrolling. This is a very early game, but even so, it's still not bad. tank up haven't I typical the game the, the time that I get to play this again after so many years I get that odd awkward moment where I'm just not getting very far I'm gonna go down the bottom and see if I can blow it out the stars Right, can I do it? Can I blow up the encampment with one tank? Did I hit it enough times? Let's hope so. That really annoyed me. How could I lose so many times? No, bloody hell! So sorry, but you're not going to see the encampment blow up this time. But I think that sort of like shows um, a lot about Beachhead. I'm probably one of the only people that have not shown you the end. But then again, this isn't a walkthrough, so. I'm not exactly um, too upset that I didn't get get to the end there. So just cut back to the camera and wind up. So this is what I consider to be an absolute classic. Why? Because there were so many firsts for me in this game. First of all, um, I saw this before it hit this country because I lived near um, an American Air Force base and our next door neighbor worked on that Air Force base and he had an American Commodore 64 and so had the disc version of the game before it hit this country. Um, when I finally got to play it, I was able to play it at home and I loved the aspect that I could basically go from leveled screen to screen doing different things. Yes, any game can get boring. Um, and doing the same thing over and over again. But this was at a time where games were generally one screen or scrolling and there weren't that much variety. And this one out had that just that little bit of variety. It also used a bit of maths. As you could see, I was having to use elevation and working out distances. Um, so for me, this had a, an awful lot of pluses to negatives. And that sound, those planes that go over just magical and it really is a nostalgia 
um, aspect to this because when I listen to those sounds, it takes me all the way back to 1983, 1984. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say this is a classic. It's definitely a thumbs up worth playing even now. Um, there were versions later on. So this spawned a sequel called Beachhead 2 The Dictator Returns or Dictator's Revenge, something like that. Um, and then spawned to one of the best games that I really ever did play, which was Raid Over Moscow, although it's not considered to be part of the Beachhead series. This programmer then developed something that went on for multitudes of different versions, and that is the Lynx Golf Games. Um, and if anybody has seen early golf games, when you come to actually load up um, Lynx for the first time on your Commodore 64, you will see it's head and shoulders over other golf games around that time. And with that, I'm going to give you your time back and say thank you very much for watching this. And I hope you find it, found it very entertaining. And roll on to the next one. Salute. Bye-bye.